Time to get in the Word. Are you ready for a little Word this morning? Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet for the reading of God's Word and for prayer. Now, I just want to say, if, you, if you're way back there, I understand, you know, being back in the shade and everything, but if you're way back there, you're going to have to help a little more. It'd be hard to hear you. I'll, be, I'll have a hard time hearing your amen support up here. So, so you know, go ahead and turn it loose, okay? Amen. amen. There you go. I'm going to read one verse of Scripture today from Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to read verse 37 in your hearing today. It said, But as the days of Noah were, so also the coming of the Son of Man will be. I'll read it again. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Join me for a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your eternal word today. Thank you for those gathered on the hill today on this parking lot. Thank you for those in the community that may be hearing us today that we don't see. Thank you for those on Facebook Live today that are hearing this service. Lord, I know that you've got something you want to say today, and I pray that it would come forth clearly I pray that people would hear your word and I pray that they might respond to it in such a way that they'll be happy they did throughout eternity. We give you thanks for it today. In Jesus' name, amen. And you can be seated. Derek, it may be my perception being outside, but I feel like i got to project, so turn me up a little bit. I don't want to blow out my voice before the day gets going. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the perception that some people have of having plenty of time. I want to talk to you about the perception that some people have today of thinking, well, I need just a little more time before I make that decision, before I get things right, before I accept Christ. You know, history repeats itself. Have you noticed? So much of our life, it cycles. And every cycle, things get a little bit better or a little bit worse. Have you noticed that? There are those today that would want to tell us in our society that our society is the most advanced that it has ever been. But I'm here to tell you today that there is an element of our society is the most depraved that it has ever been. I don't know about you, but from what I can see and what I can perceive and how I can gauge it based on uh, spiritual things, things are pretty bad. Have you noticed that? I hope today that you're not going around with blinders on thinking that one day if we just kind of keep going that we're going to evolve into some utopia. Truth of the matter is this world that you and I live in desperately, desperately, desperately needs Jesus Christ. He is the only source, only source of hope for this world. And He's the only source of hope for the world to come. Now there's a lot we can learn about history. We should study history. And we should learn from it. As a matter of fact, the Bible even tells us that. It tells us that many of the things in the Word of God were written for our examples so that we would learn those. More important though than us learning from history, it is important that we learn and take to heart the truth of the Word of God. By the way, the Word of God, the Holy Bible, 
It is a very accurate history book as well. And if you're looking for a fact checker, go to the Word of God. It is untarnished and unbiased truth. And that in itself makes it a very rare gem in our day. The Word of God may be the only source of information coming your way today that does not contain manipulative content. The Word of God provides an uncompromised gauge on where we truly are in time. Where are we? The Word of God would indicate that we are living in the end of the end of times. The signs have never been clearer. They have never been more definitive. They have never more clearly paralleled the prophetic record. In the last year, we've all heard repeatedly statements that we are living in unparalleled and unprecedented times. Another term has said that we are living in uncertain times. But I must tell you that these are precedented times that we're living in. And we should be drawing from similar previous times that are paralleled and providentially recorded in God's Word. I must tell you today, these are certain times. And we can clearly see what is ahead if we believe God's revelation. How many of you know that what the world wants us to believe is the big story, is really the big distraction. Wonder what it would be like today if this world, I guess I might stand still, right? That's hard for me to do. Y'all help me all you can. Wonder what it would have been like in the last year if you and I had heard as much about the coming of the Lord as we've heard about COVID. What if we had heard as much about the need of humanity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior as we have heard about the urgency and the need to receive a vaccine? But we haven't heard that. That's been downplayed. We've been fed something else all along. There's never been a time when the world's focus has been so dominated by something other than the biggest event on the horizon. He said, the times of the coming of the Lord and the end of the world would be as it was in the days of Noah. What did he mean by that? Let's visit what the Scripture tells us was going on in the days of Noah. It said in Noah's day, the world was filled with wickedness. Unless you've had your head stuck in the sand, you got to know there's a lot of wickedness in this world today. Listen to this, what it said. This is from the account in Genesis, it said that man, God's creation, mankind, had corrupted God's way upon the earth. Think about that a little bit. God's way. Pastor Perry read a while ago, Deuteronomy 28, outlining what God said about, about how He intended man to live and how for us to enter into the fullness of His blessing. In Noah's day, that had been ignored. Man had corrupted God's way. 
I want you to think for a minute just how far things have departed from God's will and God's revealed pattern for man. And the only way that rings a bell for you is if you have some revelation, some understanding as the revealed Word of God by His Spirit. Listen to me. Times may change, but the Word of God remains the same. It is eternally the same. He details what is right, acceptable, and He details what is wrong and unacceptable. And the standard has never been altered by God and it will never change. Trends, fashions, styles, popularity, public opinion, it doesn't matter who or how many say it is right. If God says it is sin, it is still sin. Because the world that we live in makes something legal. It does not make it moral. And it does not make it acceptable unto God. Politically correct is most often biblically wrong. Christians, we got to settle that issue. Because some of us just don't know. Some of us still feel like we need to walk that line. Some of us are afraid to step across that line. The further we go, the more important it is that we settle that issue. Let God be true and every man a liar. Oh, that was a good place for an amen, somebody. God said that in the days of Noah man was so wicked that his thoughts and his imaginations were only evil continually the thing that dominated man's thoughts and his imaginations Dreaming up ways to be evil. Does that sound like today? I've never seen a time that I felt the need to be so discerning of everything I hear. I've never seen a time that I felt I needed to be so careful about what I accept as the truth and what I act on as the truth as I have today. But the bottom line is that our world, our society, has turned its back on God. As a matter of fact, it goes further than turning our back on God. Many in our day are thumbing their nose at God. It has grieved me lately in the last week. There's a political ad that's been airing. And it pretty much does the same. It talks about what's going on in the world. And the guy ends, this is the punchline. He said, Thoughts and prayers are just not cutting it. In other words, vote for me. I'm, I'm going to do something more powerful than thoughts and prayers. God said in Noah's day that violence had filled the land. Have you seen any of that? Have you turned your TV on lately? God said, because of the condition, He could not allow it to keep getting worse and worse. 
Do you ever marvel? I find myself frequently thinking, God, I don't know you've I don't know how you've held back till now. I know it's got to be His mercy, it's got to be His grace, it's got to be His long suffering. But I marvel. I think, Lord, how how have you been able to let things get to the place that it is today? But the Word of God tells us that it is simply an evidence of His long suffering and His love. The Word simply says, we are, we are living on borrowed time today because He is not willing that anybody should perish. The only reason we're still here, church, is because God has extended the window of His grace and His mercy because He wants to see the lost to be saved and no one to be lost. And every day we wake up, every moment we're alive like today is an opportunity that He has given us graciously to be saved and to be ready. The Bible said in Noah's day before the great flood, which by the way, the scientific evidence indicates that it really happened. That flood really happened. God reached a cutoff point with man. He said, My spirit will not always strive with man. How close do you think we might be to that cutoff point today? God declared that He was going to destroy the creation and everything living. One of the saddest verses in the Bible, it says, It repented Him. It made Him sorry that He had made them. But in the middle of this hopeless picture, there was a ray of hope. The Bible says, here's a verse from Genesis. It says, Noah, actually it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Though he was a minority, there was a man that was still in right standing with God. There was a man that still maintained a right relation with, relationship with Him and that God could speak to and that God could work through. God always has a remnant that is looking for Him. He always has someone that He can move through in the land. And God told Noah to build an ark. The ark was one of many symbols throughout the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation that is a symbol of salvation of the Lord. There were many others. Moses was, he was symbolic of a Savior and a Deliverer that God used to deliver his people. Joseph was a deliverer that delivered his family and saved his family. And other places through the Bible when, when those serpents were biting the Israelites in the desert, God said, hold up this brazen serpent and everybody that looks to it and it will live. The blood on the doorpost of Israel was yet another sign. God always has a Savior and He always has a Deliverer. And Noah acted on what God told him to do. He began to build that ark and he began to preach that the end was coming and that people needed to repent and turn to the Lord. You know what happened? The Bible said that as it was in the days of Noah, 
so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Pretty much what happened then is what happens today. People ridiculing the believer. People ridiculing the witnessing. People uh, laughing him to scorn. People doing all they could to obstruct his progress in obeying the Lord. They scoffed at the idea of a flood and judgment to come. As a matter of fact, the majority continued doing just what they were doing and getting worse all the time. Listen to me. You cannot afford to take your cues from the crowd. You cannot afford to think like the crowd. Don't take comfort today in what everybody else you think everybody else is doing. If you wind up in hell with the crowd... It's not going to make it any more tolerable. If you wind up in hell with your friends, y'all ain't going to party in hell. Listen to what Jesus said. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. Because... Straight is the gate, and narrow the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I want to be among the few, don't you? So one day, it began to rain. Can you imagine? It had never rained before. But one day, just like God said, just like Noah preached, it began to rain. This wasn't a pop-up shower. It was not a soft summer rain. The windows of heaven were opened and the fountains of the deep were broken up and it rained nonstop for 40 days and nights and Soon, all doubt disappeared from the believers, from the unbelievers. And the only realization they had was that they were not ready and ill-prepared for this event. How many of you know that when Jesus comes, maybe not until then, but when He comes, everybody's going to believe then. As a matter of fact, the Scripture says that every knee is going to bow one day and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. Noah and his family and two, uh, two of every living creature, male and female, had gone into the ark and the door was shut. As long as they could do it, people surrounded the ark, knocking on the door, calling for somebody to let me in. But it was too late. The day of opportunity had passed. They had heard the message. Perhaps some of them thought they would wait and see. Perhaps some of them thought they would make a last-minute decision. When we see things like they are today, we must know that every sign that Jesus said would be happening in the last days is happening before our eyes. Thank you, George. The ark of safety has been prepared. Jesus is the way. He's the truth and He's the life. So here's the question. The most important question for you today. Are you ready? Are you ready? When the trumpet sounds, 
When as the lightning flashes from the east unto the west, and Jesus comes to take His church away, important question, will you be going up? Or will you remain here? If you've called upon the name of the Lord today, if you have repented of your sins, if you have accepted the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross so that you could have the free gift of eternal life, you can rest assured you will be going. If not, now it's either, either you know, it's one or the other here. There's no in between. If not, you will be left behind remembering the opportunities, remembering this day when you sat in this sunny parking lot and heard this message or listened to it on Facebook or heard it through a, a, a screen window in this community. If not, you will remember the missed opportunities you had to make things right. There will be no time then to get saved. The good news that I bring to you today from the Word of God. Here's what he says. Behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Aren't you glad that God has declared that there is still a day of salvation today? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Don't think that you need a little more time. You don't know that you're going to have more time. But you have now. You have today. As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. Can you imagine those people that had neglected the Word, that had thrown off the conviction as the waters rose and the ark lifted off. And there was no way for them to get in at that point. They were thinking, no doubt, I thought I had more time. Some of them were probably thinking, I wish I'd taken that preacher more seriously and gotten ready. Some of them were no doubt thinking, if I had it to do all over, I surely would have responded to that altar call when the Holy Spirit was dealing with my heart and I knew He was dealing with me personally, but I rejected that. That does not have to be you. In God's sovereignty, He saw to it that you heard this message today and you had this opportunity today. It does not have to be you. God's Spirit is moving and witnessing the truth that you need to accept Christ and repent of your sins and to be looking for His return any day. God said... That the coming of the Lord is going to be as was in the days of Noah. So here's the question. Are you in the ark of safety today? Or will you be perishing outside of God's grace? Will you be found in your sin? Or will you be found forgiven with your sins under the blood of Jesus and your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Rest assured, things are not going to go on the way they are right now. The infallible Word of God will not pass away until every jot and every t uh, tittle is fulfilled. Here's the question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Stand to your feet with me, please, as we prepare to pray and answer God. 
Are you ready? If there's a witness in your heart today that says, Yes, I know that if Jesus comes today, I'm one that's going to be caught up together to meet Him in the air with the saints that have gone on before. There's a witness inside of you. There's a peace about that notion. As a matter of fact, there's a a level of excitement and hope to that. But if you're not ready and you know you're not ready, you know it today. I urge you today, Like Noah did back in those days. Will you please accept Jesus and come in to the ark of safety and be saved today? It is so simple. God said, all you got to do is call upon the name of Jesus. All you've got to do is repent of your sins. All you've got to do is accept His free gift of eternal life and place your complete trust in what Jesus did for you that you could never have done for yourself. That's all you have to do. In a moment, we're going to pray and I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to urge you to pray the prayer that I'm going to lead sincerely from your heart. To receive Jesus. Would you bow with me? Here. Online. If you're listening from a yard around us. Join us in this. Let's respond to this message in a way. That we'll be glad that we did throughout eternity. Heavenly Father. We come to you today in the name of Jesus. Grateful for this opportunity that we've had. In a moment, Lord, I'm going to lead in the sinner's prayer. And I'm going to ask everyone that will to pray the prayer with me. Because God, we know that more urgent and more important than anything else that we're dealing with today, we've got to be ready. We've got to be ready for that day when you are instantaneously going to come in the clouds to take us with you to heaven. So Father, deal with every heart, especially that one that is furthest from you today. Give them the faith. Give them the hope and the courage to pray this prayer and mean it from their heart. And we thank you for it. Join me in prayer, everyone, that will out loud. Heavenly Father, I come to you today In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, that today is a day of salvation. That this is an accepted time. Thank you for speaking to my heart. Lord, today, I come to you in faith. I confess my sins. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. And I turn to Jesus as my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart today. Be my Savior. Forgive my sins. Help me from this moment forward to live for you. And I thank you, Lord, for hearing me today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.